morning welcome back to the course on advanced green manufacturing systems we had seen what is value engineering green plan in the last two weeks so in this week i like to talk on creativity techniques which i said i'll have a lecture on this and uh, we'll also see the concept of frugal innovation which is a kind of creative inventions or creative or innovative ideas those have led to the green products and one session we'll have on qft quality function deployment we'll see how is qft conducted and how various phases of qft progresses and how can we bring qft in green manufacturing systems so this session i'll focus on creativity techniques contents would go like this i'll just introduce what is creativity the process of creativity then we'll see the blocks to creativity why people are not creative or people do not practice creative exercises then factors conducive to creativity are important to discuss then we'll discuss some creativity techniques now why is creativity important because we are talking about green manufacturing systems as we have seen in value engineering that creativity helps us to develop the ideas which are not even in the mind of the production manager because they have all work on the proved facts what a an engineer think of there is a process okay there are materials a b c their process is 1 2 3 they are products x y z so let me combine materials a and b with using and using processes 2 1 3 and get a material y get a product y okay this is the mindset generally okay this is how okay i have to produce something i have to produce this bangle iron bangle okay how can it be produced you can produce some pipe you have to cut that the only there are certain set of the ideas which are in the mind but sometimes the people who are working in the shop floor there are certain ways to get them involved in the idea stimulation so in this case we can encourage creativity and there are certain examples where the employees or the people who are not in production have helped or have given the ideas which have produced the tremendous results in the terms of cost reduction in the terms of productivity improvement and uh, in the terms of having green products so let me introduce creativity the most unique phase in value analysis or value engineering program is creativity phase why it is it unique it can be defined as a development of ideas that are new to an individual which lead to the discovery of alternative designs methods systems processes that will help us to accomplish the basic function at the minimum cost because new ideas come so analysis of function by using creativity is called the root of value engineering okay we think of the function let us try to accomplish this function using some creative technique then the ideas are generated two general approaches to problem solving are analytical approach and creative approach what is analytical approach the aim of analytical approach reaches the final solution through a standard step by step or a systematic procedure whereas in creative approach idea generating ability of the problem solver and his ability to embark on the best out of a number of possible solutions is emphasized this is the general cost reduction that we discussed about okay this is step by step and this is number of solutions generated and then these are the ideas okay number of solution generated then smaller solutions possible okay then we finally come up with to a one solution this was creativity phase in value engineering this was our uh, second i can say evaluation phase and this one can be said as 
our implementation phase or development phase and finally, one is implementation. Now, the creative process, the creative process combination and recombinations of past experiences that form a new combination thus satisfying the needs. So, this is creative process. So, how do we start working on the creative process? Very first step is orientation. The problem definition and decision of the path to be taken has to be given to the people who are participating in the creative process. Then preparation, information gathering and fact finding. I will just discuss various creative techniques like brainstorming, Delphi technique, then attribute listing. So, the very first thing is we have the orientation, the problem definition. What is the problem definition? Sometimes I will show you the techniques in which we do not even show or do, do not even disclose what is the actual problem. Okay? We just say, okay, we need something to sit like the design of chair. We do not say we need to design a chair. Finally, we would come up with a design of a chair within the mind of the manager or the facilitator or the leader who is conducting the creative session. But the problem definition can be in uh, direct or indirect. But we need to see the ideas, those would help us develop the final desired product. So, then is ideation. Production of alternative solutions to the problem, then incubation, sorting and combining the information and showing the pace to invite illumination. Okay? This is the same thing which I am telling here. So, these are the steps we are going on. Okay? This is steps, these are the steps for creativity. Now, then synthesis, bringing, bringing the ideas together into a complete whole. So, as the ideas which are sometimes you get a number of ideas, we do not discourage or we actually encourage the idea generation. So, whenever the idea is coming, we do not just say, okay, this is idea, this idea is not acceptable. For instance, uh, when I say designing a chair, someone can say, let us put some stones or stack uh, certain cartons and let us, let us sit on that. Okay? Let us stack some boxes and let us sit on that. That idea does not seem very good in an office. Okay? But we do not discourage, okay, this is the idea. Sometimes the ideas come. Sometimes we have to just record the ideas and the first, let me say, 60 percent of ideas, we say, okay, these are not feasible. These are not, even preliminary feasibility is not there. The 40 percent of ideas we take into account. But ideas are always encouraged. So, then after bringing the ideas together, completed to whole, completed to whole means we think of what is the final product. Then start taking the ideas into consideration. Then and verification, evaluation of the proposed solution of resulting ideas. So, this is the general creative process. Then blocks to creativity, blocks to creativity, habitual blocks. The certain blocks to creativity, we, see, we generally think or an engineer thinks there has to be a systematic way to do the work. We cannot just think uh, out of box. Uh, if, if they even do something, they are much concerned about the risks, those are involved. Yes, in the short term, there might be some risks, but encouraging creativity has proved to have uh, the better results in the long term, in the overall design of the firm. Okay, I will tell you a story. My friend's kid, who is around 5 years old, he was, uh, my friend was going to purchase a speaker for his mobile phone. And uh, his kid was playing with a paper, he just turned the paper into a conical form, truncated it from the one side and the cone becomes, he just produced, started producing his own voices. The kid was just playing like that. So, when he learned that his father is trying to buy a speaker, he, he had already identified that when the sound passes through a conical shape, the sound amplifies. What he did? He put his father's mobile into the end of the conical horn that he has made. Though the bamboo speakers are there, I will show you the uh, green products, green speakers, those are available in the market. This, is, this was something that went into the mind and my friend said he did not buy the speakers because his room was small. It was around uh, uh, 8 feet by 8 feet the uh, area of room, 8 feet by 8 feet by 10 feet maybe. And that size speaker worked in that room. So, sometimes there are certain habits, those 
uh, we trust things we have, we will proceed or we utilize the ideas which are tried and true, the techniques which are tried and true, despite the fact that new and better ones are accessible. Okay. Sometimes this happens. Then dismissal of the option arrangement which are incongruent with habitual situation. The certain this was you know these papers and cons have already existed in his home, but he just dismissed them. Okay, we need to buy a speaker. I have to spend around uh, uh, 500 to 1000 rupees to buy a speaker for my uh, this room. And he did not think of okay, how loud speaker he does he need. Okay, room speaker is there. There is certain range of products which are available online, but that idea was incongruent, but that worked with him. Then absence of an uplifting standpoint, absence of decided exertion, adjustment to custom and dependence on specialist are certain habitual blocks. We sometimes think of okay, a specialist would only work. In a manufacturing concern, one just thinks okay, we, we need to design something, a new product, we need to depend upon the computer aided designer the person who is uh, well conversant with all kinds of curves which are there in CAD, 2D, 3D curves, all the kinds of free form, all those things. So, next comes perceptual box, there are certain perceptions that the senses, the failure to use all the senses of observation. What senses do we have? We can hear, we can uh, see, we can smell, taste, sometimes the perceptual process is such that we do not use all the senses and we fail to use all the senses, failure to investigate the obvious. We cannot investigate the obvious sometimes, these perceptual blocks hinders the creative process. Then inability to define terms, then difficulty in visualizing remote relationships which are not visible directly, then failure to distinguish between cause and effect, sometimes this is a perceptual block. Now, emotions and behavior and uh, organization and uh, interpretation of the perceptual blocks is sometimes difficult. Next is cultural blocks. Some cultural thinking also sometimes blocks creativity, desire to conform to proper patterns, customs or methods or emphasis on competition or on cooperation. This is sometimes a cultural block. So, cultural awareness or cultural knowledge or cultural skills all those things are there, sometimes cultural desire is there, but having confidence and faith only in reason and logic sometimes hinders creativity. The drive to be viable most importantly things and rushing to make quick judgments, so these sometimes are cultural blocks. The belief that all in dungeons in fantasy is waste of time, the drive to be viable most importantly things and rushing to make quick judgments, so these are cultural blocks. So, emotional blocks, similar to cultural blocks, we can have emotional blocks, emotional blocks are sometimes fear of making a mistake or appealing foolish, okay, risk, sometimes this kind of emotional block is there. There is situation and fear of supervisors who do not encourage creativity or colleagues or subordinate distrust or motivation to succeed quickly, refusal to take any reroute in achieving an objective, failure to dismiss choices which are satisfactory, yet which are clearly sub-ideal. Sometimes these emotional blocks also blocks creativity. Next is or factors conducive to creativity. Now, problem sensitivity, being mindful that an issue exists, this is important, this is a factor that is conducive to creativity. Okay. Then idea fluencing, being ready to create a loft of thoughts, you know most of the people are not even able to generate the ideas. If I say okay, let us come up with three words, three words which are very random, okay. then pick the second word, come up with another three words, our words have to be very random. Sometimes this fluency of idea, the people who are creative, they can only come up with the ideas, the people who are, I will show you how creativity depends upon age. If this is the creativity, I would say, the creative potential, okay, and on this side we have age. You know how creativity works? It starts from here and it is something like this, 
And what is this age at which the creativity is peak? What do you think? What should be this age? 10 years, 12 years, your age, 20 years, 30 years. This is 4 to 5 years. 4 to 5 years. Then what do you have? Why do we started becoming less creative? Because we get to have a formal education, which is very important. This is formal education. Okay. After this, with work experience and all those things or whatever we think, the creativity starts decreasing. This is work experience. Now, creativity training, which I am trying to emphasize in this uh, lecture, what would creativity training or creativity techniques help us to achieve? Now, if one conducts a creativity training or creativity sessions to stimulate the ideas, so these are, this is something that comes. These many ideas are creative, these many ideas and these many ideas are judicial. This is how creativity depends upon age and the fluency of ideas is not everyone's cup of tea. Okay? Fluency of ideas comes with training at this point in general. This is a general chart. Sometimes there are people who are very creative at the older age and uh, certain exceptions would always come. But this is a general trend which is identified by the researchers and I have read it somewhere. Next is flexibility. Flexibility is a factor that is conducive to creativity. Open, disapproved and versatile in a way to deal with an issue. This is flexibility. Now, originality, the capacity to deliver an incredible number of new and one of a kind thoughts. Originality is the idea, is that idea that is really original is that something I have seen somewhere. Something, sometimes what happens, I will show you an example here. This is the assembly, this is a turntable. Okay. I have read this example on this link. Okay. How creativity thinking spurs improvement in lean manufacturing. Now, what happened? There was a, this was a company who were they concerned with the assembly and disassembly process. There are certain components which are there. They encourage creativity. And one of their employees came up with the idea. They said that in a Chinese restaurant, they watched a lazy Susan in the center of the table and the other things were being rotated. All other foods, all other uh, deserts, all those things were rotated. There was just one lazy Susan at the center. That idea they implemented, which was given by an employee. Please note idea was given by an employee who is not even concerned with the production. They only said, okay, could this, could this uh, thing that was there in the Chinese restaurant, could this work in here? Yes. They established this turntable which can be rotated and these employees can pick the nuts and bowls and all the components for assembling or disassembling. So, this was the inspiration that we have got. They could not design this if they had not encouraged creativity. Okay? So, this is one of the examples that originality of the ideas do come. Then constructive discontent, a disappointment with the existing conditions with a disposition of mind which looks to enhance the conditions. This sort of individual normally inquires as to why and how. These are the questions that one asks. Now, other factors are observation, one has to be aware or alert to the environment that is happening, facility at combination, the capacity to join and recombine data in an assortment of ways, in a number of ways, in orientation, development of the best possible attitude towards imagination, the motivation, the summoning of the essential vitality to work towards an objective and accomplishing it. Then permissive atmosphere, this has to be provided by the upper management, an environment in which new thoughts are empowered. So, these are the factors, those are conducive to creativity. Now, creativity techniques, I will discuss, there are certain ground rules to in creativity techniques, generation of new ideas and the judgment should not be simultaneous, okay, because if you start judging something, okay, this idea uh, I could not say, people would not just come up with ideas. Okay. 
So, this has not to be simultaneous if we are coming with the ideas, okay, ideas and their judgment should not be simultaneous. They should be separated by time, space, people if possible. Time is one day I just have a, a creative session. Next week or the next after a few days I can have the judgment session. Okay, do these ideas work or not? Space is then people can be I can have ideas from one set of persons and the judgments from other set of persons or for the feasibility of those ideas. So, they have to be separated. Then possible solutions should be generated in a large quantity. First multiply the ideas produced by inspiration by 5 or even 10. Okay, this is one idea. We need to stack something and sit on a, in an office. What do we need to stack? What can we do? Okay, can we have uh, one can come? Okay, I will just show you attribute listing. Attribute listing is getting deeper into one idea. There is a, for instance, is one idea stack sitting in an office. Okay, there is one function sitting in an office. We need to produce chair stacking, stacking books, stacking boxes, stacking cushions. Okay, now stacking cushions. From where would the cushions come? From organic cloth, from uh, thermocol sheets maybe okay for so, these attribute listings kept on going step by step so these are the ways we multiply the ideas by 5 and 10 and they kept on multiplying further then seek a broad spectrum attack approach okay broad spectrum is developed as i said this is a broad spectrum then we converge and converge okay then watch the opportunities to combine or improve ideas as they are generated. Okay. Only we are combining the ideas, we are not judging. Then consider all possible ideas, even apparently impractical, do not ridicule them, never eliminate any idea summarily. Next is our first creativity technique which is brainstorming technique. You might all know what is brainstorming, you might have heard of it. Brainstorming is getting a number of ideas from a group of people without even considering what are the facts or just coming up with the ideas that is all. But there is a way to conduct brainstorming properly. So, brainstorming technique in light of incitement of one individual's brain by the psyche of another. So, this is brainstorming. The normal gathering comprises of 4 to 6 individuals lounging around a table and perceptuously creating thoughts intended to tackle a particular issue. The rules to be followed in brainstorming. Criticism is ruled out. Free willing is welcome. Any number of ideas is welcome and desirable. Combination and improvement are sought. There are certain rules, the ground rules that we have discussed, those are the same rules. A brainstorming technique, what does this all involve? So, how do we conduct brainstorming? What first is define the issue. When you are meant to brainstorm something, the first thing you need to do is to understand the definition of what you are brainstorming. Once you come up with a definition of what you are brainstorming, make sure you confirm your definition. Okay, we need something to sit. Something to sit, can we sit on the floor? We need to confirm something, something to sit comfortably that has to be at the height of a normal chair. Those definition has to be there and that needs to be confirmed as well. If you are brainstorming during a consulting case interview, confirm your definition with the interviewer. Because if you are brainstorming as a part of strategy engagement, confirm your definition with your colleagues and if your interviewer is there. It, is, it should not be that there is mismatch between your and the person who is asking the questions in their thought process, there should not be difference. Okay. The majority of candidates and consultants unaware of this step jump right into brainstorming without carefully considering the definition of the issue. What happens sometimes there is not the clarity of the question. Sometimes for instance if I say I need to develop a furniture out of the biodegradable material and if I say such as bamboo, such as bamboo sticks into the mind of the person who has heard my definition sometimes maybe, he might just come up with a bamboo, various designs made of bamboo and all those things and 
he does not even think of the other biodegradable or the you know green materials. So, we have one has to clarify what is the question okay, that verification has to happen. So, these people who just jump into this brainstorming they usually have a vague idea of what the definition is, but not much thought goes into defining the issue. So, definition is important. Then build a decision tree. If you cannot write down or visualize a decision tree, you are not brainstorming. Decision tree is okay. This is the idea for each idea. This is something coming. Okay. This we are diverging. Then we can even converge further. So this is a decision tree. You can read decision theory. We can share you the links to read that. So decision are to be put on a paper, decision tree has to be put on a paper. Key questions is then split into sub questions or drivers in a logical and in a methodological way. So, once one is happy with the definition of the key questions, then uh, for instance definition of productivity, definition of designing a chair, the next step is build a decision tree. So, then the key question is split the decision into drivers on a logical methodological way. Then those sub questions are further split into drivers of sub questions. Okay, your brainstorming analysis which usually not go further than a fourth level of a decision tree. Okay, this is the levels 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, this specific idea this cannot go further. So, we, we continue with this analysis until we can prioritize the key drivers to move on to develop the hypothesis finally. So, we can even develop like we had a fast diagram with how and why. Similarly, we can say generate ideas as our highest order function, highest order function, then the first functions can be encourage. free willing okay then uh, this is free willing then generate general generate general is we are generating the general idea which are having some facts this is free willing completely new for this what we need to do how do we generate free willing we develop an atmosphere, free, del free willing atmosphere. Then we defer the judgment. Use free thinking. Okay, this is something linked here and here. This is for these Gen, uh, generate general ideas. Also, we can have large quantity of ideas as a second level or generate large quantity. Quantity here means large quantity of ideas. Okay, this can connect here. Then at the next level, what we can have we rule out how do we do this we rule out criticism then we combine the ideas then we modify ideas then we sometimes piggyback or pick someone else's ideas then uh, different techniques can be used, similar techniques like brainstorming different techniques can be used. So, this is something that's, that comes from here. Finally, we use idea. 
idea or maybe ideas which are generated. So, this is our scope here, how and this is why. I think this makes you more clear how do we conduct the brainstorming session, right. Now, brainstorming flow is the same one and same thing, we define the problem, we structure the problem, we prioritize branches and develop the hypothesis, then build the work plan, conduct analysis and then again we structure the problem, we keep on doing this. We have this kind of decision tree like I said, decision tree can start from one problem definition or we can even have multiple definitions sometimes and then we can confirm it or uh, combine into one definition, okay. Then uh, while uh, prioritizing the branches, we structure what to do, what the problem you as you see it, due to what, due to what is causing the problem, what does it lead to, what is the impact of the problem. So, then we have these tasks, different tasks and uh, responsible for this and the date, all those things, when we bring the work plan for this, then uh, see this is something we get the final idea, conduct analysis and we get the final idea. So, this is brainstorming, brainstorming is a general and the most used technique in creativity, other techniques are there and there are certain differences from brainstorming, I will just have a quick glance on the techniques. Gordon technique is the one which formally identifies with the conceptualizing with the distinction that the gathering pioneer opens the session with an announcement of the expensive zone to be examined, not the pinpointing the genuine issue. For instance, the problem is to review procedure for cleaning windows. The topic is remove dirt. Remove dirt is a function that is identified then they work on that. In brainstorming sometimes we can say okay we need to develop a chair, we need to we do not we do not sometimes say okay we in this case we can say we need something to sit it is better. So, we do not disclose the genuine or the original issue in Gordon technique. Only group leader knows the exact nature of real problem under consideration. The people who practice this technique claims that this technique generates better ideas. The Gordon method involves developing new ideas when the individuals are unaware of the problem. This implies that the group members do not know the exact nature of the problem. The entrepreneur begins by mentioning the general concept associated with the problem. At last, the actual problem is revealed, enabling the group to make the suggestions of the implementation or the refinement of the final solution. They combine ideas. they refine ideas, okay, actually first they refine, then they combine, all these things happen here. Next is checklisting techniques, as the name suggests in this strategy, agendas are planned to tackle at a particular issue, they help our flawed memory. There are certain questions or certain points that are at the back end of our brain, which are not, which just, just does not come, but checklisting is just putting all the questions and making the uh, respondents or the participants to just checklist whatever are conducive or whatever are related to our present problem. The questions can be what is it, okay, certain question, question, then what does it cost, then uh, what does it do. So, on what else can it do, who can do it, all those things that can be done. Then, using a set of structured questions encourages both broad and deep analysis of your situation or problem. The questions themselves may be simple, but when used as a part of checklist, they become a powerful management tool. This uses a question hierarchy. In this hierarchy, what broadly states the situation of the problem, although why is arguably the most powerful question you can ask, why is something where everyone runs behind, why is why this problem, okay. Asking why forces you to consider the significance of the problem and thus nature of the responses, it can be step especially valuable when applied as a part of well known problems from techniques as 5 whys, I will show what is 5 whys, different kinds of whys, why with this problem is there, why we are doing this, 
why we cannot do something else all those questions can be repeated repeated asking of why can enable deep analysis of the problems essential for getting the root causes next you should use how where who when these questions are designed to both deepen and broaden the analysis when combined into a question checklist they become both a tool for analyzing and solving problems and the basis for an action plan so it becomes a tool number 1 it becomes the basis for an action plan all these questions so these questions can be asked what why how where who when what exactly do i want to achieve what are the facts what would happen if no decision was made what do i need to what do i need in order to find a solution then why why do i want to achieve the solution why did the problem or opportunity arise why do i need to find a solution or way ask five why at least then how questions are there then where is this going to happen so is why then who is going to do who else can do it who is involved already who else can be involved further when it has to be done when do we need to act when did the issue arise when it must be resolved then is synaptic technique this is a relationship strategy using individual similarity which influences you to feel yourself to be a fundamental piece of a thing you are planning sometimes we use synaptics like uh, we say we need to have the manufacturing system of the factory or uh, as lush green as garden we need to have washroom in our factory as clean as the dining room we do not get to it full in the washroom but we are comparing it with something so this is comparing it to be just use like, like as strong as horse okay as uh, as sharp as a pin we compare it with some other word so this synaptic study endeavored into investigation of the creative process while it is in progress so according to this was also developed by gordon so according to jj gordon the key assumptions are associated with synaptic research number 1 it is possible to describe and teach the creative process in this way invention processes in sciences and the arts are analogous and triggered by the very same psychic processes group and individual creativity are analogous now this is synaptics technique illustration this is our innovative work the star where does it come from the climate the thinking and the action so how do we think what kind of climate is roles and responsibilities trust diversity of thought how do we treat one another how do we think and respond to each other then thinking is wishing your metaphor your absurdity then connection breaking and making open mindedness risk taking ambiguity developmental thinking so this is the stimulation that happens here okay that helps us to have a synaptic process to innovative work okay then action can be vision and strategy insight processes foresight select newness then comes morphological analysis is nothing but we just get the list of all the parameters like i said we have uh, the uh, steps a b and c okay no steps we have the processes 1 2 and 3 we have the materials a b and c and we have uh, the further uh, uh, you know assembly processes x y z all those we get all the combinations all the combination whichever is best we select that so it is organized extensively to list and inspect numerous conceivable mixes that might be valuable in tackling an issue this analysis has to do with recognizing the structural aspects of a problem and studying the relationships among them in general morphology the problem of representing and visualizing more than three dimensions is overcome by placing the variables in a columns beside each other their valuable ranges listed below them this is called a morphological field so what is morphological field this is a kind of a morphological analysis which i have taken from here this table or this chart is called a morphological field okay we have the sector automation service 
automotive industry, business consultancy, chemical industry, all these things. And we have financial sources, personal saving, bank loan, short loan, uh, bank loan from short term, bank loan for long term family support. And we have relationship with competitor, joint venture, subsidiary. Now, what morphological can do? Let us focus on the automotive service, this purple block if you say. Automotive service and all these financial issues and only competitor has to be considered. Then academic level at di different levels of academics are there. Finally, these can lead to certain things. For instance, let me pick one, automotive service. Automotive service, financial sources would be personal saving and we are to, to need to see the relationship with the competitor and academic level is MBO. Then we need to personal characteristic intervention then at medium level of innovation. What does this come to be? Another way we can think of is we are having materials. Let me say this is wooden, metal, then thermocol, this is material, this is material, this is color, this is process. We are going to join this, okay, wooden, metal, then thermocol, then we can have uh, cloth or fabric, color is red, blue, green, yellow. Let us have a metal piece with blue color with, let me say these are processes to join 1, 2 and 3 with third process. What is the cost of this? Next, next combination can be a wooden piece with red color painted on it with process 1. What is the cost or what is the ecological impact of this. So, this is morphological analysis. So, what do we do in morphological analysis? The problem is what is not equal to what is desired. This is all given by different researchers. I have just put it here. Okay. Then dimension problem, the issue, the dimension, the policy problem, these all can be parameters in our morphological field. Then morphological box is important in which we work morphological field. I have defined the value of the product, the value is representation of possible or relevant conditions that each issue can assume. Then uh, the parameters, different parameters, input constraints, solution space, you can read these notes. I am just having a quick look into these. Then is attribute listing technique. There are two steps in attribute listing technique. First is to list all the various characteristics of the study object. The second is to purposely change or alter these attributes by methods for this system. This is conceivable to unite new mixes of qualities or traits that will satisfy some current needs in a better way. Attribute listing is a great technique for ensuring all possible aspects of problems that have been examined. Attribute listing is breaking the problem down into smaller and smaller bits and seeing what you discover when you do. Attribute listing is, for instance, I had the different combinations, wooden, metal, thermocol and different. For instance, we say wood. What kind of wood we have? What are available wood materials? And how could we paint red? Is it red paper? How could we paint or how could we color the wood red? Is it red paint, red paper or uh, some uh, red... Uh, uh, um, maybe chalk colors, red chalk, all those things. Smaller and some smaller would lead us to deep understanding of what all, what else we can do. So this is like this is an example. Example of attribute listing. Feature is casing, switch, battery, bulb, weight. Can casing be of a plastic? If plastic, what plastic is there? Can attribute is what kind of different kinds of plastic can be uh, listed here? Okay, if you know is the switch has to be on off, the battery, the power and it has to be rechargeable, the bulb has to be of glass and the weight has to be, weight can be heavy or light, okay. These are attributes and ideas, these can be listed in this way. Next is evaluation comparison technique. This is a constrained in inventiveness procedure for creating one kind of a verbal arrangements by framing quantifiable correlations between the components of the measurements physical properties, mechanical properties, electrical and magnetic properties, cost consideration and different properties. This akin to the numerical comparison that we saw in our value engineering process, value engineering function phase. But there is an add-on in here, while we do comparison, we also think of the new ideas. We will do QFT in this week only. So this is 
evaluation comparison technique, a structured evaluation process is necessary in order to identify the ideas that are most likely to succeed as innovations for the company, ensure that complex ideas are reviewed by people with appropriate expertise necessary to understand what would be necessary to implement the ideas and what might go wrong. So, next is buzz session technique. Buzz session it is valuable to create innovative thoughts from expensive crowd circumstances. To start with the gathering of people is isolated into an expensive number of gatherings of 6 individuals is there is a large group from which the teams are generated. Okay. In each team we have for instance we have 100 people here, we have around 6 people here in, in each team. So, small teams are generated here. Now, then what happens inside each gathering a leader and a recorder are delegated they ought to be chosen and advised before the meeting if conceivable. Issue going to be handled ought to be declared before the meeting begins. Utilizing the gathering conceptualizing strategy each gathering creates innovative choices. After a time frame and a flag from the pioneer each gathering quits delivering thoughts and starts assessing the thoughts and choosing the best arrangement. So, what happens? So, each gathering has a list of thoughts, there is a list of thoughts, okay. for some time they come up with these things. So, these, these legs are there. Now, these thoughts finally are combined into the developed or you can say selected ideas better. So, common ideas are selected here. Next is Crawford slip writing technique. This is another technique uniquely suited to a huge group of onlookers. The method is a type of individual brainstorming. This is this procedure gives numerous plans to an extensive variety of various issues in a single session in a brief time frame. It is a simple and powerful way to gather ideas to address issues facing your area. What happens in Crawford slip writing techniques? The number of slips are given to the different individuals. So, this is kind of an individual brainstorming where number of slips are given to each person and they come up with their ideas and they just generate slips, write their ideas on the slips and they paste the slips like this is one individual, second individual, third individual, they all have these slips. Okay. By writing down the ideas, everyone will have an equal chance to be heard, which is not usually in case of traditional brainstorming. This is first benefit. Second thing is, one can address both general and specific problems with this method, making it quite versatile. It is a time efficient way to gather ideas rather than having an open brainstorming session where people are talking over one another and they can even uh, get out of track and they can even sometimes the time get wasted. So, there is a plenty of time to review all of the ideas after the meeting has ended meaning one can take a clear picture of thoughts that what individual think of our product from different ideas, the certain ideas which will be very common, certain ideas which will be close to each other. So, like we discussed the functions of a pen, record data, write notes or uh, provide information, those are similar things. Okay. That, can, that can be combined by the group leader or the one who is conducting this session. So, this is Crawford slip writing technique. Next is Delphi technique, after brainstorming this is the most used techniques. It is a method of pooling a large number of expert judgments through a series of increasingly refined questionnaires. The Delphi method was originally developed in early 1950s at the Rand Corporation by Alf Hammer and Norman Dackley to systematically solicit the view of experts related to national defense and later in controversial socio-political areas of discourse. So, what happens? There are certain features in this. We have a facilitator. A facilitator gives a list of questionnaires to the people. Questionnaires are given, people have to 
people have to mark the right option then he collect the questionnaires now in this what happens if when he provides the participant with initial questionnaires he collects the answers to these questionnaires and comments the facilitator then filters out irrelevant information first thing is he provide questionnaires okay next is he collect the questionnaires and filter irrelevant information this process avoids group thinking and the problem associated with the group dynamics the facilitator then creates the questionnaires for the second round and send them to the participants to recreate the questioner okay this is step this is first feature i would say second feature i can say is the series of information collection collection rounds series of rounds are there okay these are the steps with all series of rounds in these rounds the participants can change their previous forecast or previous uh, perception the previous ideas anonymously because they won't have to uh, uh, get their names disclosed in series of rounds what happens the participants can change their previous forecast they see new information which is coming from the other participants and they can comment on it so in face to face meetings people tend to stick to the originally stated opinion to avoid losing face so in delphi method the person or the uh, who has given the answer or the questionnaire is not disclosed for in brainstorming sessions sometimes it happens for instance if i have if i have given an idea and there is a emotional block i wouldn't uh, let my reputation down whatever idea is there in my mind i wouldn't change it i will just define i'll try to defend my idea even though if i think that my idea is not acceptable i might not Uh, take it off because i have given it to one so i was the one who coined it or who, or who gave that idea in delphi technique the person is not disclosed there is a questioner one can change his idea whenever because it is only the written his name sometimes is there is option given he even do not have to write his or her name okay so these are the series of rounds those are conducted in delphi technique in delphi method one can change his mind at any moment they like then next is next i can put it has a feature only the same thing anonymity anonymity of participants that their names are not disclosed in it is normal for the participants to remain anonymous at all stages to enable honest opinions to come through the process so this is a structured variant of traditional expert polls and is usually used in forecasting this is delphi technique delphi technique involves circulating questionnaires on a specific problem among group members sharing the questionnaire results with them and then continuing to recirculate the and re refine the individual responses until a consensus regarding the problem is reached this is what i have defined administrators the administrators of the delphi method make a decision based on the results of the rounds the delphi method helps the group reach consensus without the influence of strong members of the group and the tendency to rush a decision at the end of a meeting so this is delphi technique so these are the general creativity techniques which are practiced by various organizations with this i'll like to give you a task to recapitulate we have gone through these things what do you understand by creativity and what are two general approaches of problem solving analytical and creative problem solving what are steps involving in creative process what are the main blocks to creativity what are the factors conducive to creativity what are different creativity techniques which helps in identifying and solving the problems let us try to continue our previous task again you have already selected a product you have identified the functions you have ranked the functions then you have identified poor value functions now if possible 
in your hostels if you are in a group. Try to have a team of at least three members, not two, at least three members, three to six member teams can be developed. This is the task for today, three to six members. And pick one of the creativity techniques. First technique because uh, you are all peers and you might not have a group leader. If the teacher is there, teacher can be the group leader, he can even provide questionnaires or checklists, those things can be practiced. But brainstorming can happen or uh, Delphi technique also, in Delphi also you need a facilitator. Any technique in which you can participate within peers, you can pick craft or slip writing technique to work individually, you can pick brainstorming technique to work in groups. Okay. Pick any of the techniques and come up with the ideas. You please create ideas to counter to address better to address the poor value functions. If possible, you can separate your sessions, your creative sessions with time. Have one session today, wait for one day, do not overthink, do many things, think of uh, the ideas that you have created in the next day, next day just relax. Okay. Creativity, would be, or creativity would only work if you are not thinking of that previously. For instance, you work on one ideas on Monday, Tuesday do not do anything, Wednesday again start working on the ideas. Try to have the successive steps okay, or uh, different ideas you can work on. You know, it is said that mind is like an umbrella, it works only when it is open. So, to open a mind, we have to forget the proof facts. Just come up with the ideas, list those ideas, then we can, uh, you can further do the uh, evaluation phase in value engineering or we can do QFT quality function deployment that we will discuss. So, let us meet in the next lecture where I will discuss frugal innovation. I will show you certain examples where people have used creativity to develop the products which are green, which are frugal and uh, next, next uh, we will take QFT, green quality function deployment in this week. Thank you.